Skyrim. Skyrim. A game so nice they've released it twice, and then 13 more fucking times. This game's story starts off very cool. When the Greybeards at the throat of the world shout down to summon you to go up the mountain and visit their secluded sanctuary, that's very cool. But despite starting off strong, it goes to shit around the midway point in my opinion, with the introduction of the blades. Mate, to me, the dynamic between Belphine, or what's her name, Delphine, and the Dragonborn, it was like she was your mother and she's trying to nag you to do something. Oh, clean your room! But substitute clean your room with killing your best mate that's a dragon. It's just not gonna work, lady. At least offer me something cool. For fuck's sake, you can't just nag me into doing it. Give me like a cool sword, some cool armor, some fucking reason. I think the best argument for killing Partunax is that even he admits not a day goes by where he's not tempted to return to his inborn nature. And it's like, mate, this guy's a ticking time bomb. But for me, I still wouldn't kill him because if you've been a chill fella for 4,000 years, that's not a bad streak. Also, I don't know why when Parthenax kills people, oh, that's not okay. But when I do it as the Dragonborn, oh, they see no problem with that. I killed so many fucking people. His crimes are unforgivable and need to be punished. Mate, I did all that this morning. I did all that on the way here. The guards have arrested me like six times for murder and they keep letting me out. If they can let me out, even though I keep going back and doing it and will do it again, we could probably let Parthenax off the hook, right? Parthenax is a very interesting character because even if he wasn't a dragon, he would still be a cool character, which in Skyrim is very fucking rare. Overcoming your evil nature through great effort would be cool for any character, but then he's a dragon on top of that, which does, you know, it gives him some extra points. For a game with such a colossal amount of characters, very few actually stand out. Even fewer are actually worth remembering. For example, Ayla the Huntress. Everyone remembers Ayla, but she's boring as fuck. If it weren't for Ayla's design, I don't think any of us would have ever remembered her. A lot of the NPCs you can get as followers, but then they won't actually... You never learn much about them or anything like that, about who they are as people, about their personalities. They just kind of follow you around and carry your shit. For an example, Lydia. The game gives you like two or three questions to ask her throughout the entire playthrough, so you fucking enjoy them. For most of the other characters, they don't even get that. I think a lot of the characters are uninteresting people, but they have interesting stuff attributed to them. For an example, Ilya. As far as a personality, she doesn't really fucking have one. You don't really chat to her, she doesn't really say anything. But she's a witch and she comes from a witch family, that's kind of cool. You see what I mean? I don't know what it is about this game, maybe it's just because it's quite old, but I kept losing all my followers. I lost two followers and a wife. I don't know why they didn't add a summon follower spell into the conjuration class. It would be a simple, law friendly, in-game way of never losing your follower again. So whenever you need your follower, you can get them back. I need a summon wife spell too, actually. This game's sense of progression could have been a lot better. Usually in games, you start off and you're a fucking urchin. You have no money, you have no maidens, you have nothing. And then eventually you build your way up to the top. In this game, you walk right up to the king's castle and just immediately start doing quests for him. Because you're the main character. Everyone in the world knows it. I've talked a lot of shit, but this game does have some strengths too. For example, the atmosphere. The atmosphere is so good. This game takes you to another world and it fucking feels like it too. When you look up at the sky and you see these weirdo planets and shit and you hear the music and you're in these forests, that's a really good, that's a strong feeling. That's a very cool feeling to have in a game. There are carts in game and they will fast travel you across the map to any city. But please don't actually use those, because by using those carts you're actively fucking over one of the game's biggest strengths, which is the exploration. The navigation is a huge step down from Morrowind. It decided, ah, fuck all that. We'll just tell them exactly where the NPC is. But exploring and discovering things and going in caves, it's still crazy fun. Everyone wants to be a stealth archer in this game. And I think it's because if you're not a stealth archer, a lot of what you're doing is just fucking left clicking. A lot of these boss fights do make you want to bind attack to the scroll wheel. At this point, it's a bit of a given, but it's still something that adds a lot to the world and the atmosphere and your interactions, is the day-night schedules. Everyone has a house, everyone has a place to sleep, people fuck off during the night and they come out during the day. It really does add a lot to the world, I think. Oh, the shop's closed, everyone's asleep, I've got a lockpick, it's not closed anymore. It is a bit odd the way they all fuck off at the exact same moment. It's like they're trying to get home to watch EastEnders or something. It's a bit unnatural, but it's still a cool system. If an NPC is pissing you off, you can follow them back home and try and kill them and fail because every fucking NPC is essential for some reason. I was playing as a murderer. He would sneak into people's houses and murder them from time to time. It was honest work, you know? But a lot of the time I would sneak into someone's house, I'd try and kill them, and they would just never fucking die. 
Bethesda, listen, it's simple maths. What harms immersion or roleplay more? Trying to kill someone and you can't because the devs have decided to make this guy unkillable? Or killing someone and not being able to finish a quest? You can even have funny dialogue where you're supposed to go and talk to someone and then you have to explain, ah oh, shit, sorry, I killed that guy like two weeks ago. I don't think that would be actually that hard to implement either. I think some of the magic of Skyrim begins to wear off when you realise just how on rails a lot of the quests are. On repeat playthroughs you begin to learn like, oh, okay there's not as much freedom here as I would have thought because you think, I may be a murderer but I am no thief, so I'm going to help Mjol clear Riften out and get rid of the thieves guild, but you can't. And so the, the more familiar with the game you become, the more the sort of magic, the illusion of choice kind of is dispelled. It's a bit like Telltale Games where it says like, Kenny will remember that. But if you've played the game, you just know, no, he fucking won't. But yeah, that first playthrough is very cool. And if you haven't played in ages, it becomes cool again because you've forgotten most of what happens. I have two bits of advice for new players or players who haven't played for a while. One, you can sell Dragon Bones in Riften. I don't know why, but everyone in Riften buys Dragon Bones. And there's a ton of different shops too, so it's a great place to sell Dragon Bones. And my other piece of advice is that there is a book in-game called The Great War, and I think it's a must-read book. There are some other good books in-game too, but that one really stuck out to me as like, oh, that's why this war matters. Because without that book, that war just makes no fucking sense. Anyway, the other piece of advice I would give for reading books in-game is that if it sounds fucking boring, it's probably fucking boring. Many aspects of this game are very questionable, but what's unquestionable is that it's a very fun world to be in, it's a fun world to explore, and every new playthrough is going to leave you with a couple fond memories. And even if you don't make it to the ending, it's definitely a game worth experiencing at least once. I struggle to say a bad thing about this game without a good thing to follow it, and I struggle to say a good thing about the game without a bad thing to follow it. This game's a lot like that. Todd giveth, Todd taketh away. You know what I mean? And the more you play, the more familiar with the game you become, the more your whys turn into why the fucks, but really, it's a pretty cool game.